social care has been transformed over the last 10 years. There's a real difference in what people expect from the care services that they receive um, and a, a great big difference about the way we deliver those services to people. I mean, a couple of examples might help. Now we expect people to be able to choose the kind of care that they want to have because it's them, the people in need of the care, that know what, what life they want to lead. So it's up to us as care providers to make sure that we do provide people with the care, the support they need, to have those choices, to be in control so that they can live the independent life like you and I want to live our independent lives. Can we have a care system that allows those people to live the life that they want to lead? It's so very different from the um, one-size-fits-all approach that, that used to be the case and now everybody around the country is trying to find ways of tailoring systems and care for the individual we call it personalization and personalizing the care services is a, been a, is a big project that everyone's involved in today I had a lady who um, lived with her husband she had Alzheimer's and um, she'd often get quite concerned at night time because her husband was out to work and she'd go out and knock on neighbours' doors trying to find him. Um, since then we've installed a, a voice annunciator and her husband has recorded a message on the, um, the voice annunciator. So when she opens the door at night time, his voice says, don't worry, I'm at work, I'll be home at seven o'clock in the morning. Telecare isn't the same as telehealth. Telecare is about in supporting and empowering people in their own homes. It's a voice at the end of the phone. It's a piece of equipment that enables somebody to live independently, telling them when it is they need to take their drugs, making sure that if they get out of bed in the middle of the night, that somebody knows about it and just checks to make sure that they're still safe and secure. Above all else, it's about people. It's technology that helps people to be independent, to know for other people to know they are safe, and it's a new way of delivering support to people Across every aspect of their lives. A gentleman who lived on his own and he really liked to um, walk his dog every day but we were quite concerned about him because he was at risk of having a fall and um, so we installed a property exit sensor for him so if he was longer than he normally is when he walks his dog then um, a call is put through to his daughter so that she can go out and check that he's okay. You'll hear lots of talk about assistive technology and telecare, and you may be wondering what the difference is between the two. Well, assistive technology is the umbrella term for all the different types of technology that can be used to assist the delivery of somebody's care, and telecare is one of those methods of delivery. One of the issues for Norfolk as a county is that we've got a substantial uh, number of old people in Norfolk. People retire to Norfolk and stay because it's a lovely place to live. And uh, so that's, so in terms of our demography, we, you know, we celebrate that, we, older people make a huge contribution here. But if you think about planning for future care needs, we quite clearly had to think about different ways of using the resources that we have between us, between all of us, the NHS and the local authorities, to make sure that we can deliver the right quality of care. Assistive technology seemed to be an obvious thing to look at and we were fortunate to get uh, I think what was called TOPS funding which then became Skills for Care funding uh, and also some European funding for a small uh, pilot project really which is where it began. It's a growing area of support for people as technology gets better more and more people are going to want to be supported by, techno by technology and telecare. I mean, clearly we're in a very different position for social care markets and that will be increasingly the case in the next few years. There's no doubt that individual providers, there is some anxiety about what personal budgets and the transformation agenda is going to mean. What are people going to spend their personal budgets on? I think they're going to spend some of their personal budgets on telecare. I would do that. I would look to get equipment that would support me and enable me to live independently. It's important to remember that telecare is only one part of somebody's support package. It's not the only thing they're going to need. It won't answer everybody's issues. It's a very important part of the overall care that somebody receives. It doesn't take away from any of the other kinds of support that people receive, but it adds to it and enhances it. And you know that people are safe and you know people are independent as a result. 
For the first time, individuals will be able to take their budgets and use them to receive precisely the service that suits their needs. And that for some will mean a combination of having somebody coming in to deliver services such as personal care, but also for them to have a range of equipment in their own homes which keeps them safe, secure and independent. We visited Amber in a smart house. Now a smart house is a house that's been set up with a range of telecare equipment and it's used as a demonstrator to show people the range of things that are available. Amber is an assistive technology support worker and part of her role is to assess people to determine what their needs are in terms of telecare. So this is a smoke detector. Again, someone, um, this would be placed on the ceiling by one of our technicians and um, this would um, link through to the community alarm. So if there's a fire in someone's property, it would alert the community alarm straight away so they could phone the fire service. This is a voice annunciator. As you can see, it has three components. It has the message box, it has the door contacts and it has a timer. So um, you can um, record a message on the box and um, every time you open the door, the message will be replayed. You can also set times when you want that message to work from. So for example, this will only go off between 10 o'clock at night and 7 o'clock in the morning. I'll open the door. Hello, this is the voice annunciator. The message is to be played. We have a bed sensor and this, actually, this is placed under a mattress and it would um, detect if a person has got out of bed and if they're out of bed for um, a, deter a predetermined time, for example 10 minutes, then it would alert somebody that they're, they may need help. It can also be linked to a bedside light as well, so when the person does get up in the night then the lamp comes on for them automatically, which also helps to reduce the risk of someone having a fall. We also have an epilepsy sensor um, that is, again, this box is placed under the mattress and it alerts the carer in the same property if um, someone is having a seizure. This is um, an, epilepsy, an epilepsy sensor that um, it goes under the sheet and it picks up on um, movement and temperature and, and um, heart rates and it will detect if someone's having an epileptic seizure and again go through to the community alarm to ensure that they've, they've got help coming to them. This is um, a night and day calendar. We use this a lot for people with um, memory problems and people with dementia and Alzheimer's. It helps to um, orientate them. It tells them what the day is and what the date is. And also for people who perhaps are not able to tell what the time is, um, that tells them what the actual time of day is. So we would put it beside someone's bed at night time. So when they're getting up in the night, they can see it's actually night time, so not to go out. And also we can put it next to someone's chair in the lounge. So if they have a nap during the day, they can wake up and see it's still the afternoon and not the morning. We have a chair sensor, which works in the same way as a bed sensor, but it would actually go under a chair. So perhaps if someone likes to sleep in their chair at night time, because it's more comfortable for them, it's easier for them, then we can put this under their chair. So again, if they get up and have a fall, then someone is alerted. Um, also, for um, a lot of older people, they have a particular chair that they like, in which they sit in a lot during the day. So again, instead of them having to wear a fall detector or to have anything else on them, this can go under the chair to alert somebody if they're out of their chair. One of the biggest challenges with delivering a new kind of service is for organisations to look at whether you actually have the staff that you would need to deliver that service. It may be that you have staff working for you who have an interest in IT, for example, or are really good with gadgets or with technology, and they might be people who'd be quite interested to work in the new world of telecare. Yeah, um, a good part of the job is that you are um, starting um, a new service and you're really kind of ho helping to drive that service forward and develop it and to, to kind of basically... Um, develop into, into how you want it to go and which is really good because it's really flexible and it's a new way of working and it's not you know we have a lot of a lot of flexibility and a lot of independence in in the role. They have to really be very innovative in their thinking because just because a piece of equipment is designed to do one thing there's no reason why it can't be used by lateral thinking in another situation so they have to be very imaginative in their work and they have to be very flexible they have to be very driven and motivated and they really have to have an enthusiasm for the service
the benefits for the staff of working with the new technology is they're going to have to continuously keep their skills up to date and there's nothing better than keeping your learning going, learning new skills, getting new knowledge to make you feel really motivated about your job.